Hey guys, it's Kane here. Welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you uh, operations in DevC++ and we're gonna see the program flow, input and output operations. We're gonna use a series of data types and uh, learn how to do arithmetic operations. Most of the questions you will be asked throughout this course will be based on solving mathematical, engineering, and or business level problems. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing you will obviously do is to open DevC++. I already did that. So you need to create a new source file. And having done so, we're gonna type our standard statements here just to make sure that uh, these st standard statements exist. In our program, this is gonna be like a pattern from now on. So everything you type here, uh, every single program you type must have an include IO stream uh, a namespace and a main. So these are like the, the main function for example is the console entry to the program. So without the main function uh, the program wouldn't actually create that uh, black screen that you see because this is where the console entry starts. So we're going to learn about some of the how to use some of the data types that you already are you are already familiar from Flowgoritm such as the the one of the data types that we didn't use that often was the string data type and this is basically used for keeping uh, a series of characters so you can create a series of data types in uh, C++ using uh, integer referring to the integer numbers you can use float or double both refers to uh, rational numbers or decimal numbers but the range of double is obviously higher higher range decimal numbers you can use string refer to characters more than one and and you can also use car which refers to only one character so these are there are of course more data types such as long refers to long integer short refers to a short range of integer but these are the the most frequently used one the ones that you will come across the most and of course you can expand this list as we learn more and more throughout the course but uh, these are the primitive data types and we will use them quite often throughout the course so let me just write primitive data types so what do we do with that just like we did in the flow algorithm when you want to use a variable you need to first create it so it is essential that all variables are defined before you actually use them in the program. This process is called declaration. So in order to, for example, use a value called name to receive the name and surname of a user, you must first make sure that these variables are defined. So going down now, now that you define your variable, you can actually ask in an output uh, box in this case our, our output box is the see out statement showing us the message and we can say something like please enter your name having done so now that the message is displayed on the screen we can get the input which in this case is the name file we can do the same for entering the surname. I'm gonna put backslash n referring to the go to a new line. I also put this uh, column in here that you might have seen. This is just used for the aesthetic purpose. Like even if you don't put that, it will be just fine. The program will work absolutely fine. But I'm just trying to make sure that the program has a clear layout 
it displays nicely on the black screen and what is being asked is basically very clear. So now that you have written down these statements, let's go through them. You have a name value and a surname value. The name value obviously refers to an identifier which will take the name and it's a string data type. Surname is the same one. See out is a statement to show and see in is an input statement. So basically whenever you write this statement it will display a message on the black screen on the console screen because it is automatically placed inside the main and with the C in whatever is being typed there by the user it will be stored in this identifier. So having taken this data now both name and surname you can actually do something with it. So you can display for example another data such as hello and if you want to display it in a dynamic way you can simply leave a blank space or get blank space and put the symbol again that we use in the C out and put the name put that symbol again put some space in between name and surname and put the surname this will make hello this person a dynamic statement so basically whenever this is displayed on the screen it will display whatever that user type inside the name and surname fields the final statement that I'm going to type is C in ignore and C in get these are completely optional statements even if you don't type them the program will work absolutely fine but I don't want uh, the, in the older versions the program can splash and and uh, immediately disappear this these two statements ignore that uh, splashing screen problem and also doesn't show you the execution time until you press a key on your keyboard so let's save this I'm gonna save it on uh, the introduction to programming folder uh, and I'm just gonna name it as name surname program and try to run it. Whenever I try to run a program, uh, if you make a mistake, you will realize that the compiler will display you an error message. In here, you can see the error message. It says that error expected primary expression before the token. So basically my mistake here is I put a semicolon and I try to continue the code. So whenever you put the semicolon, that line actually ends. So you need to remove this to make sure that the program still continues. Whenever you put the semicolon, that's where the program statement will end. So uh, the compiler will assume that you are done and whatever comes after must be another statement. Now that uh, it's good that we are getting these errors because by making mistakes you can learn quite a lot about programming. So we can execute this again and as you can see on the screen now the program runs and it says please enter your name. I'm gonna enter my name here and my surname and as you can see the program will display hello this person. So if I type something else in here in these fields it will actually show that data. So going there inside the program again typing X and Y it will say hello XY. So this data now becomes dynamic. You can also make it backslash N or add N line at the at the last statement to show this on a new line. So it's running it one more time. I'm gonna type my name, my surname, and you can see that this is displayed in here. You can add more data into the program itself, such as you can ask the current year. And you can ask the year born. 
I define both of these years as integer like in here you can see that I type the uh, variables side by side and underneath that I type them one after another now you need you need always to remember that there are no correct way to write programs like people have different kind of styles so just because I write these statements one after the other doesn't mean that it's uh, wrong or it's just a worse way of programming than uh, typing them side by side it's just a choice okay you can type the variable name side by side or you can redefine them redeclare them and write them one after the other this is why a program in programming we don't have uh, absolute absolutes we don't have absolutely correct ways we have uh, approaches so this is how you approach the pro uh, problem this is your own programming style and it's absolutely fine as long as the program works and it does what it's supposed to do uh, how you write is a matter of style rather than anything else so in the next part uh, now that I define the current year and year born I'm gonna ask the user to enter a value to me in terms of the current year so I'm gonna put again a backslash n please enter the current year and gonna put that symbol again the columns and get this data and this will be the current year and underneath this I'm gonna put please enter the year you were born and I'm gonna get this data as well usually this procedure this of getting data runs one after the other so it's like you get the data as the program runs and you can say something like you know uh, enter the year enter the year you were born and then display something or you can cut this here or ask all the data and show what you want to show all together so it's all up to you how you want to proceed to calculate the uh, the age we're gonna type something up there as the age value initially zero and I'm gonna come in there and say age is equals to the current year minus year born so if I subtract the year you were born from the current year this will give me your age and underneath this now I can show your age now if you don't want to leave a backslash n with each line what you could do is that you can come in here and put and and l which means and line and this will obviously uh, push the next line to the so that you don't have to put backslash n personally I prefer to put backslash n which is uh, for me it's more convenient but a lot of people are annoyed that uh, we are using so many escape sequences and they might prefer to put end line and once again that's absolutely fine so we come here and we say uh, you are put the age and some blank and say something like years old and coming there we can now show uh, how old that person is now I'm gonna compile the program and run it I'm gonna enter my name my surname the year the current year I'm gonna enter 2021 here and the year I was born I'm gonna enter 2000 now when I press enter it will say hello this person you are 21 years old closing the program you can run it again and you can see that uh, you can type some other data here and let's say the current year is 2020 and we were born in 
1996 and it will say hello this person you are 24 years old so according to the year entered it will calculate the age so this is how arithmetic operations run inside of a C program the first pattern you need to follow is declaration of variables so each time you use a variable even for just for operation you have to first define it I define age is equals to zero because uh, this is an output so usually this is how we differentiate input from the output output already has a default value where inputs they do not so that's how we uh, can differentiate immediately which values when we declare them are input and which others are output. Once these are defined, as you can see, the program proceeds each time I show a message and get a value and I calculate the age here by subtracting the year I was born from the current year and then I display a message. So this is the basis of every single program that we're gonna write. So those are the steps that you need to follow up. There's always an IO stream at the top, which indicates output and input stream operations. There's a namespace showing C out, C in statements, where they come from, under which namespace, which package. Then a declaration procedure takes place then you write the program, you do the arithmetic operations and finally there's an output. So this is the layout of every single program that you're gonna write. Of course new data, new programming constructs will be added in time but technically every single program that we write will have an input, will have a process, will have an output. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can calculate uh, more, more advanced operations such as uh, average of numbers or calculating the area or volume of a specific shape and so forth. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching and uh, that's where we're going to stop. Take care.